I want to talk a little bit about lifting and uh, glazing. Lifting and glazing are two, this is right now, this has gotten too dark, so I'm, I'm putting a wet wash over the whole thing, and then I'm going to lift it, because I want it to be much lighter. So here we go, my tissue, remember the tissue has to be um, flat, not water or anything, and then just go like this. So hopefully it's lifting. Well, not as much as I like. I'll do it one more time. And this time I'm being a little more aggressive in my, uh, I'm still lifting, but I'm being more aggressive about it. I want this to be lighter. I made, I made it too dark because I wanted this to stand out. But then I looked at the composition again and it's a lot lighter and I like it that way, so. We'll get it as light as we can. But this answers a question when somebody says, oh my goodness, if I make a mistake, what can I do? You can lift it somewhat. Okay. And of course, the harder you press down, the more likely it's going to lift off. Here we go again, one more. That's probably, probably a lot better than it was. That's great. And then now we're going to do some glazing, lifting and glazing. This is, um, we're using cobalt blue, so you notice how there's nothing on the palette. Everything, you try to keep the puddles clean and only have pure colors in them. But this is a very pale blue. I'm going to put the blue on here to see. There is a really nice dark shape in here. Uh, that I want to add. And this is just blue over the existing color that we already have. And it, it faded out a little bit. So now we want to just darken it again. We don't need to change the color, we just need to change the value of it. And then as soon as we put this in, we need to um, soften the edges. So here's a soft edge. So this is this is glazing, okay? I'm putting a little bit in here too. And one right here. And if you're looking at the picture, which you can see the picture right up here on the screen, you can see what we're doing. Okay. So now I'm rinsing out everything. Make sure that the brush is not too wet. And I'm going to soften the edges really quick while it's still wet. See how that just barely softens the edges. In here too. Okay. You can see the. Um, I want to soften stop, stop these edges too over here. There's a nice contrast between this reflected light here. This also is a little darker down in here. But that, we're talking about warm and cool too. So this is pure red. I'm going to put a little bit of that down in here because this is darker than this this one. See that? See that? How dark that is? That dark edge against that. So it's sort of the right color. It's a nice warm reflection, but it's it's too light, too dark. Not dark enough, I should say. Okay, that's better. Now we have it, the warmth of the reflection, and we also have it a darker value. But also, glazing is for going back and darkening things that aren't dark enough. Like, now you see the difference between this and that. I'm going to lighten this slightly. Just a little bit. And then, um, I'm going to darken this before I go any further. This is a little crimson, which will make it really dark. It's almost black in here. A little bit. And, and if you put a little blue over the alizarin, it will make it even closer to black without being black. All right. So then now I want to put that color over here. Um, do it this way. We'll start with the um, alizarin crimson in the very dark shadow on the onion. It's such a beautiful color. It's not really um, dark enough yet. So you see how I'm talking about value all the time and color temperature all the time. So you just have to ask yourself, is it lighter or darker 
than what I'm looking at? Or is it warmer or cooler? That means color temperature. Now this is all sort of the same color, but it's much lighter here, much darker there. Let's do that. Let's add a little water in here. This is lifting. I'm lifting off a little bit of this color. See, I'm lifting it off. There's not much paint on the brush, I'm just lifting it. But see how I just lift that? That solves my, um, solves the value problem. Now we have light and dark. But let's go back again with the, over here, this, this whole section here. There's also a wonderful highlight in there. You sure and save the highlight. And this is very dark over here. So this is not going to do it. Have to You see, I'm really thinking about shape and the value of that shape. So now I'm putting a little more paint on here to make it darker, but it's not going to be dark enough yet. So both of these, the dark, that side and this side, need to be just a little darker. So let's put just a little blue in there, which will darken it. This is a glaze of blue right over the alizarin crimson. That darkens it really fast, huh? Okay, and then we'll darken this one too. There we go. That's probably enough for now. And this up here, this up here is almost pink. I'll just use a little bit of alizarin though. I'm making this kind of thin alizarin. Yeah, I want it to be bright. I put a little pink in it, just to keep it brighter. There we go. A little um, opera pink. There we go. Because we want this to be really bright in here. So let's just enhance it a little bit. In here too. I'm lifting again, see? I noticed a little highlight in there that I missed, so I'm just lifting it off. And then up in here, it's a little accent, a lovely little accent. Make it as dark as I can, right there, okay? You see, I'm just using the one brush. Somebody asked about, they wanted to order a little tiny brush, and I had a nervous breakdown. So you don't need it. You just need this nice, dark, the point. Okay, there we go. Anything else? Maybe this could be slightly darker. Now, see, I put three or four layers on this shadow over here to make it dark enough. All right, let's go in here. The next thing I wanted to glaze before I do the background, and that's all, this is almost finished. Just a couple of glazes, finish this, put the background in. Um, this would be another example of glazing. Um, I'm taking pure red again, right here, pure red. Make sure there's no, nothing in it and putting it over the whole pepper because this pepper came out to be a little bit too, a little cold. But you see, I want this to be pure red over here. So I'm putting some pure red over the whole thing. There we go. Pure red. Because it's such a pretty red. You see? And then I put red, this is glazing. I'm putting red over the whole thing down here. See that? So then let's put, to finish it up, let's take some green, thin of green, which we use for everything because it, it blends so beautifully with other colors. I'm gonna put this, I know it's much too bright, but we're going to neutralize it. It also doesn't need to be too dark, so let's keep it light, very light, light green, and put yellow over it. Remember I keep saying, please mix on the paper, not on the palette. So here we have a bright yellow puddle, and we just put that right over here, and we have a lovely green too. And then I'll take that yellow and put up here on top. Put a little bit more in here too. Let's put some yellow in here too. 
And the idea, if you have something on your brush, put it someplace. This is a great way to do it, right here. Now this isn't, um, this is about right, but the green in here isn't dark enough, so. I'll put just a little more green in here, right in here. Let it bleed a little bit like that. And sometimes you barely have to touch it at all. Barely touch it, just what you want. In fact, the deal is to touch the paper as little as possible. But in here, I kind of like these lines. I want to put a few lines in. This is probably too bright, but that's perfect. That is just such a happy accident. Hmm, amazing. Oh, but lift, but I have to lift something. When you, when you let it get away from you like that, um, you want to keep it, but then also, notice in the picture, I don't, I want to keep this very light. So I have to lift that off while it's still wet. See? See right there? So that was a, that was a thing of just dropping in some paint, letting it bleed, let it look like it's very really spontaneous, and then lift it off before it got away from me. There's so many things you can do to keep your, the spontaneous look. It still isn't as bright as I'd like it, but it's kind of hard to get bright, bright red. Maybe I, I'm going to lift a little bit off of here, because I like them. So some people said their paint didn't look translucent enough, so maybe they need to lift a little bit like this, and just a hair. Maybe down here too, this has gotten a little dead. But see, I can bring back the vibrancy just by lifting with the brush a little bit, like right there. See? Still a little dark, but bright. There, okay? Anything else? Let me see here before I go to the back, the background. Um, this is a lot lighter right here. Let's see if I can lift it off. Maybe not. Do the best we can. It's a lot lighter, lighter than it was. So that's, I think that's fine. This is, this could be just a little darker right here. Because the edge is very crisp right here. Uh, so where it is dark, keep it dark, but as it comes up, it gets lighter. Back up. Okay, so, oh, I forgot to bring it down. <laughs> I've got to bring it down to the, um, when I put it in the first time, I didn't bring it down to the level of the table. Okay, so this is how you can fix something. Which is really kind of a happy accident because I want this to be nice and dark in here. But it's too bright, so we'll take a little alizarin, which will make it more neutralized and also pretty dark. There we go. That's perfect. Okay, now all we have to do is finish it with background gray color. And I also, before I get the background, I want to show you one more thing. This is another thing of glazing. I'm glazing this side. This is blue. So just plain blue, but not, not, too, not too much. Pretty thin. A glaze is usually pretty thin. I want to cool this off over here just a little bit. Just a hair. Um, without losing the nice light that we had. There we go. That's enough. Over here a little bit. Okay. I could go back in and pull out some accents, but I'm not going to take time for that. But now see, I think I got it on too dark, so all I have to do, take the paint out, the water out, and lift it. Like that. See? So, lifting it off is just as important as putting it on. There we go. And then on this side over here, I'm going to add um, a little bit of orange, but I'm going to do it in stages, like right in here. Could be a little, I'm just putting yellow over the whole thing. This is a yellow glaze. See how important glazing is at the end? I want this to be very bright, a little brighter in here. So I'm putting some yellow right over, right over what was white. Okay, there we go. And I do notice that the table is warmer over here, but mm, I'm not going to do it because I would prefer that it stay white. And I would have had it white if I could have figured out how to do it. Um, but then we take this burnt sienna line. This is just a line and um, put in a few of these accents in here. 
um, a few lines. I call them accent lines. It doesn't really do it. Oh, there's a nice shadow that got away from it. Right in here, super dark. But under here seems to be an important shape. See the dark shapes under here? Put a few of those in. And I had drawn them in too. I indicated where they would be. So. Just a few of them, not all of them. I kind of like the way it is. But in here, there seems to be some dark that we need. A few accents. See that? Put the darks in, you'll be fine. Okay. This is a good place. Baskets are a great place to leave something to the imagination. You know, kind of get to be too much and you can go something like this. Just just lift off a little bit and make it more spontaneous looking. Now the background. Hmm. One, one last thing. I want to um, neutralize with a little bit of red. I want to neutralize some of these lines in here. They're, just, they're there, but they shouldn't be too important. They're just lines. They're not any particular color. And then again, there's an accent. Accents are so wonderful. They just save you every time. When you think you don't know what to do, put an accent in somewhere. Okay, there we go. That's as dark as it needs to be. I put a little bit more dark right here one more time. I think how many how many darks I put on there. Hmm. Maybe a little bit of accent here. I'm looking for accent. Right here. This is this is really darker looking at. Hmm. Okay, the last thing would be to um, fill in the last in the background and we'll see how it looks. Um, I was using cobalt, so I think I'll go back to that. But this isn't very dark. This whole that's a bit too dark. I'm adding a little bit more water. See, I add a little more water, and I get a better value for the background. I know there's a lot of variations in here, but the main thing is that it goes from light to dark, which I really can't pull off in this case because well, maybe I could. This could be the trick is now since this is really too dark. I have to decide if I want to maybe have it go the other way. Mm. Let's think about this. Uh, let's put this in first and take a look. Okay, this is just a blue background um, all the way down to the tabletop. And actually, I, I kind of like that. I don't think that we need... I mean, the idea was to have it go from... In the, in the picture, you see, I went from dark to light on the other side. But since I got this too dark, I think I should keep, keep it that way. So I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to uh, bring this over just a little bit so there isn't such a hard edge here. And, um, there we go. Get rid of that line. I don't like that line that much. Definitely need to Just to soften that edge if we can. So there's several ways of softening it. One which I'm doing now is adding something a little darker to it so that it doesn't cause so much attention to itself. Keep playing with it. So now I'm pretty much not concerned about the picture anymore. I'm thinking about what the painting needs. That's a different, totally different thought process. Okay, see how now it's going from dark to light? I might even, now that I've decided that, I don't think I have to have this as light. Just play it up to be the dark side. Keep working on this edge here. Keep adding a little bit of cobalt, please. I want to, I'm going to soften the edge of all I'm trying to do. You don't really notice it so much. Oh, bam. So, I mean, this is kind of a happy accident. I think I might even just leave it. Yeah, there we go. I do, I do want to um, bounce a little green up there because there isn't really any of this color. I want to keep it light, 
but let's just take a tiny bit. This is glazing again. See the, the pure green? Keep it really, really pale and just echo a little green up in here because we have a lot of green that we want to bath over here. So the background is so important. It's, it's a big part of the painting. The color that you use, the values. Uh, see, I'm just echoing the green up here. Got echoing. I think that's it. I do it well. Wait a minute. One last thing. I just found some place to put a few little accents in with the burnt sienna again. Um, like maybe maybe these lines here. I want to put these lines in here. You see, I'm using this great big brush, but I'm using the point of the brush like that. Okay. Now these are these would be your little finishing accents. Um, a few lines. A few lines that we didn't really pay much attention to until now. Yeah, let's go. I need to go back and put a few more lines. Maybe over here. Uh, I'll darken this a bit. Hold on. Right over here. Let's make these really dark. Okay, and in here, this is a great place for the accent. See this right there? This is almost black, maybe with a little bit of blue. And just a few of these accents will make a huge difference. And then this is going to be darker. Right in here. In here. Yeah, I'm going to really wrap this around. I drew it, but now I'm painting the drawing, wrapping that around. Probably a good place for some finishing detail. Yeah, we'll take a definite line. So put, put a few in, just don't fill in every last one. There we go. Any more? Let's see. Maybe in here. You see how those wrap around like that? That's good. And then there's an accent in here. Right in here, in here. Yeah, quick. What do you think? You like it?